Daniel has been praying for 21 days, fasting and praying. Some of you will remember the story. As he's praying, there is a, a visitation of an angel called Gabriel. Well, now we know there's Gabriel, there's Michael, and there's Lucifer. Okay, well, th those we, we know are named angels and most likely are classified as archangels. You know, the, the military works on basis of authority. Did you know that's how it works in the spirit realm? There's principalities and powers and rulers, and, and there, there, there's a, an authority system. A principality, as we're going to talk about here in a second, this prince, which heads up this principality, this territory known as Persia, is still right now alive. This is because these, these beings do not encounter death. Okay, these are angelic, created angelic beings who fell in the rebellion with Lucifer against God. The Bible says he was able to take a third of the angels in this rebellion. So, you all still with me? While he's praying, he can't seem to get through a breakthrough. Angel Gabriel shows up and says, don't be afraid. I'm picking this up now, Daniel 12, uh, out of chapter 10. Daniel... For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. One in twenty days. Now here he is on the planet Earth in a day, a rotation on the planet caused that earth to go around 21 days, 21 times, while this encounter that's going on between Gabriel and this prince of Persia. Now, folks, you understand, these angels are outside of the time issue as well, too. And yet, on, on his thinking, Daniel's understanding what's happening here. And he says, you know what ended up happening? He said, but lo, Michael, who is one of the chief princes, now here is also a prince. But he's on the good side. Okay? This is the same dude that shows up several times to protect Israel. Gabriel is, throughout the scriptures, known as the one that brings the messages. He's the one that appeared to John the Baptist, mom and dad. He's the one that appeared to Mary, etc., etc. Here we are now finding Gabriel come to bring a message, but there was an encounter so serious and so powerful that Gabriel needed backup. Now, I'm telling you, I'm, I don't know how to explain that. I'm just telling you, I've just accepted it. Okay? So it says he comes and he helps him, and because he was being detained by this, and it probably was a territorial right, I don't even know. I'm not even pretending. But anyway, it says, and there he was with the kings of Persia. Now, here's the crazy <laughs> thing about this. This demon spirit, which presides over that area, of Iran, this prince of Persia, headed up the kingdom on the planet. In other words, the dude on the planet is getting his background from this angelic stronghold. Now, I'm not into the freaky stuff, okay? So I'm, I'm trying to not, I'm trying to stay as far from that as I can. But there's some stuff here, folks, that you and I can't quite grasp. I don't want to pretend that I know, and I'm not going to take huge leaps and try to build a doctrine off of it, but I've got news for you. There are some kind of territorial things going on here that I can't quite understand. I'm just going to believe what the Bible says. And that this principality is a prince over this particular area, and this is causing a fight to be in Daniel's life. Well, long story short, uh, the crazy thing about this, when the, Gabriel says he's going to leave, the scripture says that he told him, he said, now, Danny, I'm leaving, but when I leave, guess what? I'm going to encounter the prince of Grisha. Now, historically, the Grecian Empire did not show up to hundreds of years later. But you got to understand, folks, we're again talking out of the time domain. He leaves our little three-dimensional world and goes into a dimension much bigger than ours and he encounters something into the future and it's getting ready to take place then. Now you figure that one out. Okay, I can't. 
I just believe it. Now, the reason why I'm saying that, it's no coincidence. This is an absolute proven geological fact, okay? There is a window called the 1040 window. This area is an area that can, contains the largest population of non-Christians in the world. The area extends from 10 degrees to, uh, 10 de uh, to 40 degrees north of the equator and stretches from North Africa across to China. It is an actual area, as you see right here on the map. You all see that, okay? Listen to this. Only 3% of all the languages of, for which the Bible has been translated are directed toward the 1040 window. Only 1.2% of all mission giving goes to the 1040 window. Only 1% of all the Bible the, the Bibles that are distributed are distributed to the 1040 window. Now, you explain that. Why is that? And here's the crazy thing about all this, folks. This is a perfect illustration of literal, unexplainable phenomenon that we know for a fact, documented in the scriptures, that describe demon powers and spiritual warfare that hinder God's work. And guess what, folks? The thing that is so crazy about this is that, look at the map, Iran is right in the middle of the 1040 window. Can you see that? Now, that's about as freaky as I'm going to get, okay? We all stay with that. That's about, that's about the extent of it. But what I just shared with you, we can say what you want to. I don't really know how to explain it, but I'm telling you, this is real. The fact of the matter is, there's something going on in that territory of the planet Earth that we know for a fact is an undeniable super stronghold, uh, a stronghold of hell. Now, with that all said, let's get back to this whole thing about confronting Iran. Listen to what this man goes on to say, again, coming from a secular source. He says, quote, Iran is not simply a problem. It is the problem. It is not just a member of the axis of evil, but the founding member of the chief sponsor of state terrorism, or to use a more recent characterization, the central banker of terrorism. Now, what I'm saying to you is actually military knowledge. This is a fact. For example, U.S. News & World Report recently had an article about this in which they said, Iran today is the mother of Islamic terrorism. Tehran openly provides funding, training, and weapons to the world's worst terrorists, including Hezbollah, Hamas, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and the uh, Popular Front for Liberation of uh, Palestine, and it has a cozy relationship with Al-Qaeda. Now, with that said, now once again, think about what we've just so far said. We've said Iran is an issue, number one, because it's the world's second supplier of oil. Okay, so we got it. Biblically, we know Iran to be Persia. And we know that it has a very demonic stronghold presiding over it. And at the same time, it happens to be, as all demonized civilizations and people express, is filled with violence and a horrid hatred of the gospel. Okay? So are we all on the same page so far? Now, with that said, let me read to you something that Winston Churchill said I think is going to help us as we get into the next turn on this message. He says, the farther backward you look, the farther forward you are likely to see. Now, I'm going to share something with you that maybe some of you have either forgotten, some of you may have never known, but it's pretty much been within our lifetime that most of us are here.